Good morning, Alicia. Oh, by the way, I love your name. You are a digital marketing consultant and the founder of uh, ABM Marketing. I am curious to know, how did you get into marketing? Um, well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Um, actually, I think I kind of got into marketing um, by default. So um, early on in my career, I was initially studying business administration and then relocated to the Atlanta area from South Louisiana after the birth of my son. And, um, you know, just kind of was really starting my career um, at that point and ended up in a position where I was an office manager. And as we know, office managers tend to wear a lot of hats. Um, so I started out producing this really little, tiny, small newsletter. And this was like even like when uh, digital marketing was at its infancy. So we would, uh, I would mock up this newsletter and we would actually fax it to all of our franchisees. Yes, yes. So this was like when email was just getting started and everything. So, um, so yeah, so that was kind of my first little dive into the marketing world. And obviously I kind of caught the bug at that point. Um, and then throughout my career, I've just been very blessed and privileged to um, have some opportunities that came my way that I was really able to take advantage of and um, caught that marketing bug and just haven't looked back. I really love it. So it's, it's been fun evolving in the marketing space as the marketing space has evolved. Um, you know, it's always learning something new and always being open to, um, to, to, to saying yes, let's and figuring it out. Absolutely. And I love what you said. You faxed the newsletter. <laughs> oh my yes, goodness. Yeah, we faxed it. And I mean, and it went out to uh, several hundred people. So that was like an all day task, but it, we, we did it. That was marketing in the beginning for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is, I never thought that was a thing at all. This is yeah. awesome. Imagine like, Oh my goodness, the world really changed, isn't it? Yeah, wow. Completely. Yeah, now the click of a button, we can touch what millions of people if we want to. So, yes. big, big differences. Big differences, yes. You, your experience is very impressive, um, I, ha I have to say. But one of them in particular caught my attention. You work for Gov Events, which is a government event portal. Can you tell us about that experience and how you took them from 250,000 to over a million in a year? Um, well, that wasn't in a year. I'm so sorry. Um, but that was over my career with them. So, um, but basically when I started with Gov Events, they were pretty new, um, to the, uh, to the government event space. And basically we were a web portal and aggregator for government and military events. There's no other, even to this day, there is no other website out there like that. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of grassroots marketing. We did a lot of events in the beginning where we would get out and actually meet people within the government space. So that was a great way for us to grow initially. And then from there, um, again, kind of the newsletter. So, but ours was digital. So we sent out weekly newsletters to all of our uh, members and, um, you know, we, uh, we were basically also, in addition to being a government web portal, is we were also what I would consider a boutique marketing agency. So we would have clients that were looking to attract um, government employees to their marketing, to their events. So we would market those events for them. So um, the sales that you're seeing there were the sales of these advertising packages. So um, part of my job as the marketer was to, um, you know, figure out how are we going to reach these decision makers who are trying to uh, promote these events with the government space. So, again, we did this through newsletters. We did this through email marketing. Again, the grassroots, um, actually attending events ourselves. Um, you know, one thing, too, that we always got the question of, um, you know, was why don't we produce our own events? And basically, we chose not to do that because we didn't want to be in competition with the people that we were trying to help. Um, mm -hmm. so throughout my career with Gov Events, it was, um, it was pretty amazing um, seeing how that company went from, you know, a very small to a very uh, large, well-known company. Um, they're still doing great. Um, I miss my girls there, but I'm so happy that I made the switch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think that it was a very uh, big effort of you and also the team that's uh, to put that together also to reach that goal. So teamwork is very important, I will say. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Very much so. So now, 
you started your own. So how did the idea of starting your own business come to you? Sure. Well, um, again, I've always been passionate for marketing. And when my time at GovEvents was coming to an end, I was just kind of sitting around going, you know what? I still want to be in marketing, but I don't, um, I don't want to do it for somebody else. I want to do it for me this time. Um, and I will also say, too, that I have been working from home since 2008. So I was working from home long before the rest of the world started working. Yes. From home. So the thought of having to go back into an office potentially, or, you know, I'm in the outside the Atlanta area having to commute in Atlanta traffic was just horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know what, I'm going to do what I know how to do. And I'm going to start a marketing company. And I was very fortunate. Um, I um, um, registered my domain on January the 5th. I, um, on January 7th, I had my first get to know you session with a client and they signed with me on the 10th of January. So legit, I mean, it happened like that. So, um, that, that, that to me was instantly a sign that, oh my goodness, this is definitely meant to be. Um, and since then I've added a ton more clients to my portfolio. My team has grown from just me. I have a program coordinator and um, I also have a gentleman that I work with who does a lot of content and um, SEO stuff for us. So um, I may be still, I may still be small, but I'm definitely um, a force to be reckoned with. But small is good, you know, because small, what I like with being small is the fact that um, the customers get a lot of the care and the support that they need. You get, you know, it's like it feels like family. And when you become corporate, it feels like money. <laughs> so exactly. I think small is a great thing. And I think a lot of small business owners appreciate the small part as well. Exactly. Definitely. And that, that's, that is one of the things, you know, um, uh, not only is, you know, marketing my passion, but also I like um, training others. So part of the way that I've kind of structured my business is if you come to me and say, hey, look, I only need you to help me for a limited amount of time. I re This is really something that I want to eventually be able to do for myself. For example, social media. Everybody always thinks, oh, social media is so easy. You just make a few posts and, you know, and, and the world comes and it, it's not quite that easy. So a lot of small business owners need that extra guidance. So I will help them, you know, come up with a content calendar, figure out what the core content pillars are that we want to promote and help them kind of craft how they want to handle their social media. I'll do it for them for a few months and then we'll sit down and I'll train it, train them on how to do it so that they can do it going forward if they choose to do so. So I really, you know, I like to empower uh, business owners to be able to do their own thing. Now, naturally, if they want to keep me on board, and let me handle it. I'm very happy to do so. But I think also, you know, by educating them on digital marketing and best practices and, you know, how you should do things if you're looking for specific results and have specific goals in mind, you know, that, that's really helpful for business owners to figure that out uh, or to have some, a partner on that journey to help them figure that out. So that, that's really where I kind of come in and really have that partnership. And like you said, that family. Um, we were talking about, you know, in the beginning of my career, how I started as an office manager. One of those was for a plumbing company based here in Atlanta. And, you know, the owner of the company and I have always kept in touch throughout the years. And as soon as I launched my business and made, made it Facebook official, he uh, immediately called me up and said, all right, let's talk. So to me, that just spoke volumes of somebody that I worked for many years ago, as soon as he knew that I was in business for myself, he was like, absolutely. And one of the comments he made to me was like, why haven't you done it sooner? And I was like, thank you so much for that vote of confidence. He trusted you because he knows that you're going to get it done and you're going to get it done the right way. Absolutely. That's all. And I love when you said that you teach them how to do it. If they want to learn, you teach them because that's something that's really important. Learning, even that if you don't want to do it, I think just learning the basics of how it's done, it's good to know it as a business owner. Um, and I love the fact that you provide that type of uh, service to your clients because not everyone want to do that because they don't want to teach you. They want to just keep doing it for you for the rest of your life so you can keep paying them. Yes. So I think you taking that leap is like, like, I love what you're doing. I want to support you. I want to see you grow. I want to see you shine. I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm, I'm here. I'm not leaving you because I'm teaching you. 
I'm teaching you. So if anything happens to my business, you got this on your own. So, exactly. Hey, I like 100%. that concept. Yeah. So your company, uh, a- ABM Marketing, I know it provides smart digital marketing strategies for small business owners. Can you tell us more about it and the services it offers? Sure. Well, that kind of brings me in like, you know, everybody's like, uh, or tells you, you know, what's your, what's your, what are your words for the year? You know, like before we used to have vision boards and things like that. So I was, um, attended a seminar a few weeks ago, a networking event with some lovely ladies. And they were like, what were your words for this year? And I was like, oh goodness, that's a good one. So I was like, crazy was the first one because it's been crazy. Transitional because there's been a lot of transition for me. And then rewarding. So um, it's been very, it's been a very rewarding journey. That said, um, you know, as I started to develop my company, I just kind of like, okay, digital marketing, we're going to do it all. And we can do it all. So if you're, again, if you're looking for somebody who can just kind of help guide you through the social media process, we can definitely do that. We can help you set up your uh, social media channels, help determine which the cha- which channels are the best for you, whether you know, you're a service-based business or a product-based business. Um, I can start with branding. So let's just say that you don't even have the first thing set up. You, have a, you know what you want to do. You know what you want to be called, but that's it. Um, so, you know, I can, we can help with logo creation and design, typography, you know, figuring out the colors that you want to use. Um, we do do, um, website development, so we can create websites. Um, I will, uh, caveat on that, you know, we're talking about the more simple websites. If you're going to need something super custom, that's going to do a lot of things. I may not be the best fit for you, but as another part is I'm going to tell you that. And I have a wonderful network of um, businesses that I work with. So if something is out of the scope of, pro- of what I can handle, I'm going to say that to you up front and I'm going to help you find somebody who can help. Um, I'm getting ready to launch in the new year. Um, we're going to be uh, focusing more on SEO audits and helping um, clients with existing websites um, improve their search engine optimization, Um, you know, helping them with keyword research and content development, because, you know, as as Google is continuing to evolve in this new digital space, um, they're constantly changing how they're looking at the websites. And especially from a local standpoint, that local SEO has gotten so much more, um, is so much more important than it has been in years past. So if you want your your business to show up organically on page one, you need to make sure that you have a website that is properly optimized to make that happen. So um, that, that's, that's part of what we're really going to be launching in the first of the year. Um, I kind of spent this year, you know, doing some tests and figuring out my process um on some of my friends websites and some of my clients websites and you know just just trying to figure out okay where is the real value in this so um not only will we be offering just the audits themselves but then if you're like okay help me fix all of this and take it to the next level then then we'll be um offering those services as well um you know i mentioned my content person so he is phenomenal um his background is um technical writing and um, he knows how to write for SEO. So that's super important because, um, you know, anybody can claim to be a writer. Anybody can say that they write blog articles, but knowing how to write those articles so that they're going to help your, uh, help your SEO organically, that's super important. So that's one of the reasons why I chose to bring him onto my team. So I'm very, I'm very fortunate um, you know, that I've been able to surround myself with good people that, um, again, where I may not have the skills, but I can go out and find those people who can help get fill those gaps so that I'm able to offer a wide variety of services to my clients. Um, Let's see, we also do email marketing. So from, um, you know, designing templates and laying out the content to um, actually doing the execution. I have a couple of e-com clients that I work with that I do that for. Um, I have become very proficient with Klaviyo email marketing. Um, you know, I had, I had lots of experience with other platforms and now I've become, uh, actually I'm certified in Klaviyo. So that was a little bit of a learning experience. Um, you know, getting to know Shopify and, um, you know, just, again, just 
just spending a lot of time looking and seeing what's out there, evaluating options, um, you know, and then being able to make good recommendations to my clients as well. If they're looking to grow their businesses or try something new, I'm able to say, hey, look, I tried this. This is what I would recommend. Or even, you know, hey, make sure you stay clear of this because this was not a good program mm -hmm. and it was not worth it. <laughs> I love that. I love the fact that you uh, go. Uh, how do I say that? You like an, you like adventure in business, so you go you you explore everything. So yes. and and I like that because you can help your clients kind of get into the right track. Because you know, as small business owners, we make a lot of mistakes. But unfortunately, we don't have the money to afford all that type of mistake. And working with the right people, that's very important. So. Yes. I, I like I like the way you think and the things that you do because that's mean that you care about your clients and you don't want to see them failing. Because I know you know that we don't have a lot of money, especially when starting out, um a pandemic hit us. It's a lot just yeah. happening in this world and then we're still affected by them. And um having the right I think having the right support, like I said, is important for small business owners right now. It's very important. And digital marketing is one of the top we need it. Absolutely. One hundred percent. And especially, you know, we as as everybody knows, you know, we've gone from COVID and now into this even more uncertain economic times. You know, we 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 hear what's going on with the word potential recession and everything. And I, that that's very scary for small business owners because if people are still holding on tighter to that money, um, you know, it, it it's definitely gonna be difficult to um to navigate this. Which you know brings me to a great point. Um, that's not the time to pull back on your marketing. That's the time to get smart about your marketing. So if there's something going on where you're like, "Hey, we've tried this for a while and we're not seeing any return on our investment," that's definitely a time when we need to have a conversation. Because if you're just if you're if you're doing what you're supposed to do, but it's not producing the results, then something's wrong. Perhaps it's the audience that you're trying to target. Um, perhaps you haven't done enough um, competitor research to figure out, you know, what your competitors are doing so that you can figure out what else that you offer that's different than them. Um, you know, those are very, very um, important things that, you know, can help you spend your money more wisely if you have a full picture of what's going on. Yes, I agree with that. And also, I think that finding someone that's enjoy what they do and love what they do They do and keep educating themselves. Because I meet people that say, I've been doing uh, digital marketing for 50 years. I'm like, oh, 50 years ago, digital marketing wasn't, was it alive? I was it alive. I don't know, but I don't think it was there. <laughs> so I hope you stay with the market. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and, you know, and what worked, you know, again, you've got to be able to evolve because what worked, um, you know, six months ago, a year ago, you know, maybe even last week may not be what works this week. So again, it's, you know, having somebody who could be your partner, who's up to date on all things digital marketing and can make sound um, recommendations and be able to back up those recommendations too. I mean, I, I don't just pull things out of the air because it was the latest buzzword that I saw or heard on some uh, podcast or webinar. Um, you know, I, I definitely take the time to, again, to research and investigate and really think about what does this client need? What things can I do for them to get them to where they want to go? And not just saying, you know, here's a package. It's $5,000 a month, sign on the dotted line. And then, you know, we, we never talk again. I am very much, you know, I meet with my clients on a very regular basis always checking in with them. Um, you know, we, we all have each other's cell phone numbers and stuff. And I mean, if they, if they pick up the phone and they call me at eight o'clock at night, chances are I'm going to pick up that phone and answer that phone call. That's, a, that's, that's part of what we're going to work on in 2023 or some more boundaries. But at the same time, that's, that's, that's how passionate and how much I value them. You know, they're, they're part of my family. So just like if my son picked up the phone to call me, uh, if, if a client picks up the phone to call me, I'm going to take that call. Yes, and also one thing that you said uh, about SEO is the fact that you are in a trial process with it, which if you are taking the time to do a trial with something before you sell it, that's mean you care about the people you're going to sell it yeah. to, which means you want to bring success and you want to see results when you sell it, not just selling it just for the money, but selling it because you know it's working and you know that it's going to bring something back to that client. 
So yeah. I think that's one thing that when you said it, it was like, okay, she cares a lot to take the yeah. time to say, I'm going to go on a trial test with this, with a few clients. That's not everyone do that. <laughs> no, 100%, because I wanted to make sure that I was going to provide the value that I want to with this service and um, make sure that it gave me everything that I needed. And now I'm ready to, to, to roll it out in the coming weeks. And, you know, we'll be excited to help even more small businesses um, become even more successful. Exactly. Can you work with your clients anywhere within United States or even outside of United States? Um, I do consider myself a national company. I am not international yet. I have um, a cl uh, clients out in uh, Colorado, Florida, and the rest of them are here in Georgia. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I am not just because, you know, I'm not down the street from you doesn't mean that I can't work with you. Um, I love, um, you know, I, I love the variety of clients too that I have. I mean, it's, you know, every, people have asked me, you know, before, well, who do you specialize with? And I was like, I really don't, because again, in my background, I've had the fortune to work with so many different companies. I'm very diversified in that knowledge. So the same thing is like, I can bring this knowledge uh, to, to my clients as well. Um, so, I mean, I work, like I said, I have e-com clients, I have attorneys, I have service-based industries, I have um, business coaches um, that I work with. So, I mean, I'm, again, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, but in a good way, um, because I know, I know what works. And the fun part about being, you know, having clients in different industries and stuff, it is an opportunity for me to test different things and see how they work. And it's like, okay, well, if it worked over here with this person in this area, will it work over here for this person in this area? And chances are it does, um, you know, with a little fine tuning and stuff, but it, it gives me a lot of opportunity to be able to try and do things that I might not normally be able to do. Right. I like that. But also, I know you talk about, uh, you spoke about uh, email marketing. Do you also do newsletters or do you consider that as part of the email marketing? Sure. That, I, I consider that part of the email marketing. And yes, definitely. It is something that I'm able to, um, to do. I've, I've produced, goodness gracious, many, many newsletters over the years. Again, going way back to way back when it was uh, paper copies and fax machines to, um, you know, with, with my tenure with GovEvents. We were producing um, three newsletters every week based on the type of memberships that we had. So, yes, I have a ton of experience in newsletters and um, they do work. I know that a lot of I've spoken with lots of business owners in the past where they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, you get on, you start doing them, you do them for about three months and then you run out of things to say. So you stop doing them. And, you know, one thing that business owners need to understand is those email addresses that you have that's gold that is gold to your business you know even if the service that you, that you offer is maybe a one-time service or a not very often service um you still want to be in front of those individuals on a regular basis so um you know touching them with a newsletter is great and if you can't do it monthly then do it quarterly but don't ever go a long extended period of time without touching those people on a regular basis because if you're not touching them somebody else is so why not be the one who's touching them that's true that's true so you only do you only focus just on small business owners or you also help a medium company sure i would be happy to help a medium company um you know again i my primarily the companies that i'm working with the, at this time or smaller, um, but yeah, I would welcome the opportunity to work with larger size companies. Um, you know, some of the companies that I've worked with, um, you know, in the past include AT and T, T Mobile, uh, Verizon, Dell. Um, you know, uh, uh, several big name companies. Um, so you know, so I know how the big dogs work just as well as how the little guys work, and you know. The little guys, again, I just, they're, they're more family. So that, that that's kind of where my heart has been. But if there's a business out there that's, um, you know, a medium-sized business and really looking for somebody that can be a partner, I would love to talk to them. Absolutely. I like that idea. So you have more than a decade of experience as a business uh, marketing professional. How do you leverage your experience in guiding your clients? Ooh, great question. Um. <clears throat> 
I would say the biggest thing and one of the guiding principles in my business is um, first and foremost, follow up, because it is amazing to me how many companies, uh, you know, when you reach out to them inquiring about something, crickets, and you don't ever hear from them. So, you know, that was always, that was one of my things when I was like, okay, when I'm going into business, I am going to be the person who responds to, to, to messages and outreach. And I mean, you know, I'll get leads that come in and I'll, again, like I said, they're, if they're not a good fit for my business, then I'm like, yep, you're not the right fit for me. And I'll refer them out to somebody else. Um, but on the experience side, it's given me an, I know, I know when to say when, and I know what I can and cannot handle. Um, I know what it's like to be, you know, down in the trenches, um, you know, hustling to get stuff done, hustling to meet those deadlines. So, you know, that that's that's a big part of my experience, you know, um, is I, I know what it's like to be that small business owner. I know what it's like to work with small businesses. Um, I know what it means, you know, when you're sitting at your computer at 10 o'clock at night trying to get something perfect before it goes live. Um, you know, and that, that's where a lot of that experience comes from is just that dedication, that desire to do a phenomenal job for everybody, um, treating everybody equally. You know, I don't care if you're, you know, a tier one client or a tier three client, I'm going to give you just as much, um, just as much attention as everybody else. You know, I'm, I, when, when I'm working on your project, that is the only project that I'm focused on. And that is the most important thing that's going on. In, in my world at that point in time, um, you know, and I think that that truly shows through with my clients and the, the, the glowing reviews and recommendations and stuff that I'm getting from them. Um, but the other pillar of my business, too, is, a, you know, not being afraid to admit when you've made a mistake because we're human. Stuff happens. Um, you know, if an email goes out with a broken link and you discover it the moment after you hit that send button, you know, having to make that call to the client it might be uncomfortable, but it's still going to happen. I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to own it. And I'm going to do everything that I can to correct it. Um, fortunately, knock on wood, that has not happened. <laughs> in my, but it uh, can. It, it has not happened yet with ABM, but it, it certainly can. And, you know, it has happened before in my career. You know, you, you'll, you'll see some. There are some people in the marketing world that uh, say that they intentionally send out um, emails with mistakes so that they can turn around to send out that oops email because oh. it pushes their open rates because everybody goes back to that first email that they may have just put, you know, deleted to see what the error was. So then they read the first email to try to figure it out. So I'm like, that's really? sneaky. But that's that that's that's not the way that I would want to run my business or build my business. But it, it's funny when um when you hear about organizations doing that. And now when I see it, I always wonder, OK, well, was this an intentional mistake or did you guys do this on, uh, or was it a real mistake? Wow. I never actually think of that. They actually do that for real. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's that's crazy cool. out there. <laughs> that's next level. <laughs> 100%. So the world is more digital than ever now, especially after the pandemic. How do you think small businesses can scale their businesses by, by cashing in on the digital boom? I mean, like by trying to focus more into that just digital to be able, especially like all businesses is there and it's a lot more complicated now because it's kind of like you compete with so many businesses. The one that just had the front store on the mall is now online only. So what do you think they can do to actually scale the business with that? Sure. Um, again, first and foremost, I would say that you need to have a good web presence. You need to have a, a website that is um, very easy to navigate, easier to use, that provides an excellent user experience. OK, so I mean, because of that, if you're not if you don't have a brick and mortar anymore where somebody's walking into your store, that website has now become your store. So it needs to shine. OK, so we want, you know, we want, and you need to be looking at that website or having somebody look at that website on a regular basis to make sure that it's performing or not performing, but to make sure that everything's working like as expected. And it also needs to be mobile optimized. So those are two super important things and and try it on different devices. 
I mean, you know, an Apple and Android and your tablets and everything, make sure that you're continuously looking at your website, especially if things are changing often. So if you're like putting up ads and things like that or changing imagery, make sure every time you're doing that, that you're going through to make sure that it's working across all platforms, um, all providers, all, all devices, um, because it's, it's, you, you may not realize it and all of a sudden, you know, your web traffic drops off and come to find out it's because you just had a blank screen when somebody opened it on an Apple device. So that's, that was it's definitely my first recommendation uh, more than anything. From there, you want to be able to concentrate on that SEO. And not only does your website look pretty and does everything work, but is it optimized for SEO? Because if people can't, if, if I'm Googling attorneys near me, and your website isn't well optimized, you're not going to show up on that first in first page or so. And, you know, especially if you're in a super competitive market, for example, like an attorney, like a plumber, like a real estate agent, you know, those are all um, opportunities where if you spend a little bit of time optimizing your website and, you know, curating a good social media presence and good reviews and everything, that, that's going to help you stand out from the pack. Um, from after, you know, from website to SEO, then I would get, start getting into the social media game. Um, you know, I get the question a lot, you know, about TikTok. Um, personally, we're not really doing a lot. Um, ABM marketing is not doing a lot with TikTok. We are doing more things with reels and stories and stuff on Instagram and Facebook, just because the businesses and the clients that I'm working with specifically, TikTok right now isn't the audience that they're going for. That said, I know enough about the digital marketing space and about the platform that if a client came to me and says, hey, we really want to break into the TikTok world, I would definitely be able to provide, uh, provide insight and guidance and, uh, you know, give them the best, the, the best foot forward into that platform. Um, but that's also another thing that we're really pushing and just like anybody else in the marketing space or videos, those reels, those videos, those stories, starting a YouTube channel that all has a significant impact on um, on your on your on your business and all of those things tie it back into that organic reach. So if you have the right mix and everything is firing on all cylinders as expected, you should have no problem rising through the ranks and increasing your SEO presence and hope catching some of those organic eyeballs. From there then you can go, start going into the pay-per-click um, space excuse me. Um, and again, depending on the type of business that you are and what it is that you're trying to accomplish, that's going to depend on what you want to do. Um, but you know, the good thing about uh, digital pay-per-click advertising is you can be so super hyper targeted that, you know, even though you only have a small amount of money to invest in an advertising campaign, if it's done right and targeted the right way, it should knock it out of the park. Um, and you should have great success. But again, that's when you want to partner with somebody who knows what they're doing and can really, you know, make sure that those ads from the beginning are set up for success. Um, so we're, we're, I'm very, again, fortunate, got lots of experience with Google ads, lots of experience with Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, you know, and I'm seeing some really good success with my clients that we, where we are using paid advertising. This is awesome. But one thing that you said is, is um, I, I really like is the fact that if you're not having that phone store anymore, so your website become that phone store. The same way you are going to invest in that phone store to make it all nice and then everything in the right place and the right way you want the client to be able to find them is the same way you need to spend the money on your website to make the same thing happen. 100%. So, yes, and I like that when you say that. And I think a lot of people don't think of it that way, but that's how it's supposed to be. Absolutely. And, you know, gone, gone are the days where you need to have a programmer and spend unseen, uh, you know, gobs and gobs of money. Now, I mean, again, if you are, you know, a large company and have a lot of clients and everything that you're servicing, okay, that, that could be a different conversation. But if we're talking about a small business owner, you know, a, a service based or e com business, you do not need to go out and hire a programmer and spend a ton of money on your website. 
I mean, we're from, you know, there's so many platforms out there that, you know, basically plug and play, um, you know, that with the right person who can partner with you, where you really in the beginning think about, okay, you know, again, your branding, what's your branding, what's your voice, what are your colors, what is your goal, okay? Let's figure all that out. Let's look at the competition. Let's do that good competitive analysis. And then let's figure out the best way to produce the content for this website. Map all of that out from the beginning. You know, look at your graphics and all that stuff. And then use one of those plug and play uh, platforms where you're just putting everything into the right place. Again, somebody who understands SEO and how that web page needs to be set up so that it's being crawled correctly by the spiders. And everybody, everything knows exactly what it is and where, where it's going so that from a technical standpoint, Google is easy, you know, can easily recognize your website and what it's supposed to do. Um, you know, you can, for a few thousand dollars, have an incredible website that, you know, does everything that you want it to do, um, you know, where many, you know, five, 10 years ago, that would have probably cost you 10 to 15, maybe even $20,000. So. And you can also manage it. So that's, you know, again, talk circling back to, I like to train people. So I may go in and I may design your website and Webflow and we may get everything going exactly, or Wix, whatever, whatever we decide is the best for your business. We may get it all set up and have it firing on all cylinders and doing exactly what we expected to do. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to show you, okay, this is the admin side of your website. If you want to change this picture, here's where you go to change this picture. If you want to load a new blog article, here's how you go through the process and load a new blog article. So again, I'm very, very much hands-on in training and wanting to help people, um, you know, learn to do it themselves if they want to. If not, I'm not going anywhere and I can help you no matter what. Exactly. So another question I have for you, um, do you think that every social media is for every business owners out there? No, definitely not. You need to figure out, again, look at your business and what it is that you're trying to um, sell or who you're trying to reach, and then we'll decide what platform is best for you. So the majority of the clients that I work with, we pretty much focus on Facebook and Instagram. Um, But then I do have a a coaching client, a couple of coaching clients that we also focus on LinkedIn because they're trying to reach executives and want to be able to coach them on, um, you know, their their uh, growth pattern. So LinkedIn is a much better platform for them. But no, do not just go out and say, oh, because it's there, I'm going to have a profile on it. Um, You know, that becomes very cumbersome to keep up with, um, you know, as far as updating it. And it's it's not going to give you the success that you want. You know, you really need to really think about what is it that I'm trying to communicate? Who am I trying to reach? And then look at the demographics of that platform and, and, and choose those. I recommend um, my, my, the ones that I recommend the most, Facebook, Instagram, Google Business. Those are the three that I recommend that if you have a business and you're not on those three, get on those three. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wanted to ask that question because I know that a lot of small business owners, they try to be everywhere they possibly can be. And a lot of times they just waste their times being everywhere where they're supposed to be focusing in just one or two or three, not just every single one of them. So I wanted to make that clear from a professional that's been doing it for years. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I mean, you know, I have I have a LinkedIn profile and I keep regular updates on my LinkedIn profile, but it's not the core focus of where I spend my time. It's not, you know, it's it's not where we're we're um, we're headed right now. Now that might change. But for ABM Marketing, we're doing really good with uh, with what we've got. So I'm really happy. <laughs> so any advice? Uh, let me back up a little bit. Any marketing advice for small business owners out there? Um, yeah, again, um, definitely, you know, t- stop and look at what your competitors are doing. That's That's a really simple, easy one. Go, you know, pick three to five direct competitors. Go to their website, see what they're doing. Go to their social media channels, see what they're doing. You know, um, what whatever they're doing, figure out how you can do it better. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, and you know that's the other good thing about um, marketing and, or, and and this stuff. You know, there's there's so many resources out there 
I mean, you can yeah, you can spend all your day, you could spend the rest of your life probably reading a new blog article or looking at some new uh, shiny marketing platform that's out there. But take the time to kind of focus inward, see what your competitors are doing, see what you can do better than them, and go for go go out there with that. You know, figure out how you know d b how to build the better mousetrap. You know, we've all heard that before. Um, you know, and, and really think about where it is, you know, within your business that it brings you the most joy and also the most profit because, you know, mm. if, if, if you're spending your time, um, you know, focusing and doing a lot of small jobs that, you know, yes, they may pay the bills, but are they bringing you a lot of profit? Then maybe it's time to reconsider, okay, let's, let's go after these, you know, higher value jobs that bring in more money so that you're not working so hard because you're having, you're bringing in more profit, um, you know, as opposed to running from job to job and doing, the little, you know, doing, doing five little jobs or one big job. What's, what's going to bring you the most profit? What's going to bring you the most joy? What's, you know, what's going to help you with that work-life balance? Although I kind of laugh, um, you know, I, I, I've come to believe that I don't think there is any work-life balance to some degree. Um, because everything is, especially as a business owner, you know, it, it's all that, that is your family, you know, yeah. that, that work, that, that, that work-life balance is, you know, it is, is providing a successful business and, and potentially legacy for your family. Um, so, you know, that, that's part of the reason why I chose to stick with marketing because I'm passionate and I believe in marketing. And so when I'm doing it, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work. Yeah. Yes. I like that part. It doesn't feel like well because it shouldn't. It should be something you just enjoy doing. It's it's fun. It's it's it when you joy. It's it's make you feel happy about doing it. It's not something you just feel of headaches and frustration all the time. Yep. Yep. And the other thing too, you know, for small business owners that have um, you know, teams and stuff, again, make sure that you're hiring for your uh for your weaknesses. You know, bring in that mm. person. You know, if you aren't, you're, you're not a marketing expert, find a marketing company that you can partner with. Um, if you're pulling out your hair because payroll drives you crazy, invest a little bit more money, get a payroll company to help you with that, you know? Um, it, and don't, again, don't be afraid to walk away from bad situations either. Um, you know, not every client in business is the right fit. So you've got to be honest with yourself and say, you know, hey, I, I, you know, I, I love the opportunity, but unfortunately, it's not the right opportunity. Um, because I think that that's, you know, we, we, you want, you need to be happy. If you're not getting up in the morning excited about what it is that you're getting ready to do with your day, you need to find something else to do. I mean, and, and that, and that could be a hard conversation for some people to have. Exactly. And I, I will not even add anything else because you said it pretty much perfectly. Any advice um, do you have for a uh, woman that want to start out a business? Ooh, yes. Yes, actually, I do. Don't be afraid to go for it. Um, you know, just just believe in yourself. Find your tribe who believes in you and can help lift you up. When you have those bad days, because we all do, they will come around. Um, one of the things, you know, I mentioned that I've been working from home for years. Well, when I was working with uh, my former company, you know, I, we had our team and, you know, we did our team things and we worked and I did very little networking outside of my four walls. Um, so that was one of the things that I did immediately, not long after I launched ABM Marketing is I went out and I found a networking group. And it's a women's only networking group. And it was probably one of the best. And next to starting my business, it was the second smart, smartest decision that I made <laughs> over the past year because I'm now surrounded by other business women who are going through some of the exact same things that I am. And, you know, we, we, there's really been some great friendships that have formed because of this networking group. And it's not even so much about clients, but it's about having those other women that I can talk to and say, hey, look, I'm growing. What are you using for your credit card processing service? You know, who do you recommend for, you know, I want to build a new website. What companies do you recommend for building new websites? I mean, outside of the fact that I can do it, but I want to know who else out there is doing it too. 
so that I, again, I'm going to look and see who my competition is so that I can try and do it better. But having those women that you can get together with on a regular basis and connect with, um, bounce ideas off of is so important, so important. And then, you know, having your family behind you and just, just don't be afraid. Don't let that little voice tell you that you can't do it. Um, and if you are having that little voice tell you that you can't do it, call me. I'll, I'll, I'll tell that little voice where to go. <laughs> it's not me. Call her. She said it. Call her. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alicia. I appreciate the time. I love talking to you. It's so much fun, full of knowledge, and also warm, you know? Uh, welcome. And I appreciate that. Anything else you'd like to share with us before I let you go today? No, I don't think so. I've really enjoyed speaking with you as well. This has been an exciting uh, exciting time for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with uh, what has happened in 2022. And I can't wait, you know, not that I'm wishing time away, but I can't wait to see what 2023 brings for uh, ABM marketing and for other small businesses. You know, I, I wish everybody out there great success. And, um, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to say yes, let's and jump in and just figure it out as you go along. Absolutely. And um, I appreciate what you are doing, the way you are helping other small business owners and in the experience you have, and also you want to keep on learning and keep to be able to help them better every single day. That's something you don't see all the time from other business uh, owners. So I think that you are a great uh, add up to any businesses that need your skills uh, that want to learn. And I think that you are, I don't know how much you are charging, but you worth every penny of it. That's all I can say. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that.